Isaiah chapter 11, and it corresponds with the 11th book of the Bible, 1 Kings. 1 Kings. In the Hebrew Bible, there is no 1st and 2nd Kings. And we're looking at the second advent in this chapter and the millennium. Interesting. Uh, First Kings would not be the 11th book in the Hebrew Bible. The Hebrew Bible books are laid out different from the King James Bible. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Now, if you look at chapter 10, verse 5, the Assyrian type of Antichrist, the rod might of anger. And you got the rod of Je the stem of Jesse, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know how far we're going to get in this chapter. The line of the tribe of Ju Judah, capital L, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The adversary as our line, that's the devil. The Antichrist will have a kingdom. Jesus Christ has a kingdom. You got to realize when we're in the realm of Satan, the devil, the Antichrist, they are an imitator of Jesus Christ. They have both Jesus and the devil. They have a doctrine. They have a Bible. They have a city. They have a group of people. They have a motive. They have a kingdom. And yet the exalted one, the holy one, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the rod. Well, the devil's rod is the Assyrian, chapter 10, verse 5. And uh, Psalm, thy rod and thy staff. That's the devil. A rod out of the stem of Jesse. Jesse, of course, is David. David's dad, father. And a branch, capital B. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That capital B is deity. Shall grow up, shall grow out of his roots, out of the roots of David, out of the roots of Jesse. And, and you can find that, that in Matthew chapter 1. You can find that in Luke chapter 3. Jesus Christ is of the lineage of David, Jesse. And the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, shall rest upon him, the rod and the branch, the spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Who is the fear of the Lord? Jesus Christ. Do you realize that the great white throne judgment Unsaved men, whose names are not in the, in, in the book of life, are not ever going to face God. I feel a sneeze coming. Now you take me. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I am saved by the merits of Jesus Christ, the gospel alone. When I get to New Jerusalem, the Bible says there is God in this throne. Definitely Beyond a shadow of a doubt, written scripture, there is God in his throne and he's got a green rainbow around him. Never, ever is a man that rejected God, goes against God, standing at the great white throne judgment, name not in the book of life, is he ever going to see God? Who does he see on the great white throne judgment? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is that fear of God. Or, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you into the lake of fire that burns forever. That's to be a fear. He has all knowledge. He has all might. He has all wisdom and all understanding. He is God. Though the Jehovah Witnesses deny it, he has the same attributes of the holy, righteous Jehovah God. And shall make him the quick understanding, alive understanding, in the fear of the Lord. 
Well, what's the fear of the Lord? What's the understanding for today in the church age? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What, what is it in the time of Isaiah? Do my statutes, do my words, do my law, do everything I tell you to do. Obey. And if you don't, there's only one period of time I can see it through the Bible of salvation of people they don't even know what to do. And that's coming out of the tribulation period. When God separates the sheep and the goat nade, God says, because you, you visited me when I was in prison, you, 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 you fed me when I had no food, you took care of my medical needs. And they're like, when do we do that? And the conduct and the activity to his people, the Jews. And he shall not judge after the sight of eyes. And what's that? You're not going to dress yourself. You're not going to put yourself in the eyes of Jesus and have Jesus pity you because of what you look like. Jesus Christ is not going to care if you're white, black, yellow, brown, scarred, young, old, female, male. And before the eyes of Jesus Christ, at the second advent, Jesus is not going to care what you look like, and he's not going to judge based upon looks. Neither reprove, blame, after the hearing of his ear. Oh, Jesus, forgive me, Jesus. Oh, please, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Jesus. Oh, God, Jesus, please, didn't we do this, Jesus? Didn't we see this? Didn't you do it in our street, Lord Jesus? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But didn't I have a great ministry? Didn't I? Yeah, he deceived them. But Jesus, didn't I? Yeah, and you had alternative motives. At the judgment and second advent of Jesus Christ, there is no really need for a hearing because Jesus knows all, has all, understands all, and has the wisdom of all. And he'll make all right. It's not what you look like. It's not what you're going to say. The righteous judge will judge you wholly and completely honestly. You're not going to get that judgment now. But with righteousness shall he judge righteousness, holiness. You're not ever going to blame Jesus. You're not ever going to get a retrial after the trial of Jesus. You're never going to be claimed false or injustice. And if you do, it's only to your discredit. He shall judge righteousness, shall he judge the poor, and reprove it with equity for the meek of the earth. He's the perfect judge. And he won't judge character, he'll judge in righteousness and holiness. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Come over to Revelation 19. Now this is second advent. What's the rod of his mouth at the second advent? Revelation 19, at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Rod out of his mouth. A scripture with scripture. Now he's the rod, and there's a rod come chastening. That's what the rod's for. Chase as Syrian, the rod of my anger is chastening. What is Jesus Christ going to chasten when he comes back as a judge? And I'm looking. I don't want to. I want to read the whole thing, but we don't have time. Sorry to say. Oh. Verse 15, Revelation 19, 15, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he shall smite the nations that shall rule them with a rod of iron. There it is. Sharp sword, that's the word of God. That's the word of God. You see the pages we're holding? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And that's going to judge all men. 
the Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, I thought that was good. It turned out to be wood, hay, and stubble. All right, open the pages of the Bible, see what it says. Well, why did he get the crown? I don't think what he did was right. Let's open the page in the Bible and find out. Great fights on judges. Let's open the page of the Bible. The word of God's what was what judges. Jesus Christ is the authority of the word of God. He is the word of God. John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 5. And don't mess with those scriptures that they do in modern Bibles. So that rod is the sword, and he is carrying a rod of iron. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. The wicked, that's the Antichrist. And then wicked people. I told you, when, when in the Bible, when you see the wicked, I mean, that is the wicked people, but you point that to the Antichrist. And righteousness shall he girdle his loins, and in faithfulness he girdle his reins. Reins of what? That horse. <clears throat> now we get to the millennium. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Small l. In normal life, without with, with the curse of the earth, the wolf would be eating the lamb. When the curse is removed in the millennium, the wolf shall dwell. Dwell. Not they say the wolf shall shall lay down with the land. That's not proper scripture. It says dwell. Where is that? A sheep coat. That little wall of protection that the sheep go in there and the shepherd lays in front of the door. I'm the door of the shepherd. There are gonna be wolves in there. That's not the church age doctrine. There are wolves in a pulpit scattering the sheep. The wolf is, is a type, is one of the types of the devil in the Bible. And here he is, he's, he's with the sheep now. Good. Jesus and Paul and Peter warns of, of, of sheep, I mean, wolves in sheep clothing. Not in the millennium. Why? The Antichrist, the false prophet, are in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And the devil is bound up for a thousand years. And the curse is removed. And the leopard, another type of antichrist, shall lie down with the kid that's a goat. Again, the leopard would eat the, the kid. And the calf, not as a golden calf, you wouldn't be learning how to smell chicken. And the young lion. Well, the young lion in the natural today. Right now, not in the millennium, would see the, the tender calf as hoo -hoo, beef. And the fat lean, that's an animal raised to be fat for food, the fatted calf, together. You have got coming in the millennium, you have got the, the eater dwelling and lying and fellowshipping with it's dinner. You're not going to get that today. I want to see the Catholic Church bring in the kingdom. I want to see the Congregational Church bring in the kingdom. I want to see the Mormons bring in the kingdom. I want to see the Muslims be, bring in the kingdom. I want to see the Republicans bring in the kingdom. I want to see the Democrats bring in the kingdom. And I want you to have the wolf dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the goat. And the calf shall dwell in the young lion. I want you to get all these animals together. Without having a pile of bones. And then you're God. What is God? How do you know that Jesus Christ is God? For too many, they're going to miss it. For too many Jehovah Witnesses, they're going to miss it. What are you talking about? When we get into the millennium, and I'll be there, save Christian. I don't know what happens with those that don't get in here. But in the millennium, when Jesus Christ removes that curse, Oh, isn't that a pretty little kitty over there with a lamb? And I'm not talking about a house kitty. I'm talking about a lion. Just laying there together.
Listen, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den to be eaten. And the cow. Look at all these animals. And the bear. That's another type of Antichrist. <coughs> Shall feed together. Not the bear eating the cow. And there have been many times where bears have come and, and killed cows and ate them. And the young ones shall lie down together. You're not going to get that today. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. All the animals go back to their present state before the flood as vegetarians. It's not to Noah gets out of the ark that God's okay, you can eat meat. And so when a, when a person comes up to you and says, well, when you look at the creation of man, you look at his teeth, his teeth were made for vegetables and fruit. Yes, Adam and Eve in the garden. Absolutely, 100%. So were the animals. And when Noah and his family, the eight people, got out of the ark, God said, okay, now you can eat meat. And the only other time that God says, all right, you can't eat certain meat is when he spoke about the Jews under the law. And we are under grace now. And Paul says, listen, if you can bow your head and thank the Lord, dine. Now, you say, what about pork? We can eat pork. But there are some people who can't handle and digest pork. I can eat pork, but there's certain times in pork or a certain pork, it bothers my stomach. Don't eat it. Because I'm under the law? No, because it makes me sick. But we were originally, animals were originally vegetarians. After the ark, they came out, we, we were allowed to eat meat. There's a special diet given to the Jews. And under the age of grace, we can eat whatever we can that our bodies will allow us to eat, and we can thank God for it. The Jews still keep their dietary laws, and when the church is out of here, you're in Jacob's trouble, you're back to the dietary. Well, what about the dietary? Well, here's the animals eating straw. Imagine a lion out there eating hay. He ain't going to do that today. That's the curse removed. Only by Jesus Christ. So show me how Jesus Christ can be God. Too many of you people that doubt Jesus Christ is God, you're not ever going to see it. And the suckling child, that's a woman, that I mean, that's a child that's on a woman's breast, like a weaned child, shall play on the hole of an ass. That's the only time that word shows up. You don't let your children play with ass. Paul is, is, is gathering firewood and, and, a, and a beast snaps right onto his arm. Don't do that today. But notice that, that, that serpent, that's a, that's a type of the devil. Revelation 12. Look at that curse removed. In the millennium, here son, play, play with this snake. Don't try that today. That's the curse removed. And the weaned child, he's just got off his mother's breast, shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. That's a venomous. You don't do that today. And yet, in the realm of the devil, and devil possession, people mess with, with snakes and serpents today. It's not the time period. You don't mess with snakes and get unharmed until the millennium. You see, the devil will deceive people, saved and lost. I can do it now, and you're not supposed to do it now. It's not the time to handle snakes. It's the time to kill snakes. They, all the animals we just read about, shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, 
For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, millennium, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there's that particular expression, there shall be a root of Jesse, there's the family of Jesse, David, Jesus, which shall stand for an ensign, that's the flag, and it's not going to be the stars and stripes. The root of Jesse, which shall stand for an end. Jesus Christ is the flag, not a piece of material. I'm telling you right now, you may not like me for saying it, but, you know, the honoring the American flag is a God. I know the Jehovah Witnesses say that. I'm not a Jehovah Witness. Jesus is God. You, you can't let it touch the ground. It can't get wet. If it's going to be out at night, you got to have a light on it. And if you got to get rid of it, you got to give it to these group of people who don't have a ceremony to get rid of it. But just take your Bible and just throw it you know, out in the rain. Throw your Bible in the back seat of the car. Just throw your Bible in the garbage. You treat the flag better than you treat the Word of God. That is a God. And you'll be guilty when you put more honor onto the idolatry of the flag than you do with the love of the word of God called the Bible. Okay? I see more people get buried with American flag put in the dead man's hand than they put a Bible. Okay? All right, you got another nail that you can nail me in my coffin. He's against the American flag. Okay, that's fine. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, when God, Jesus tells you, you were wrong and I'm right, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. Because the stars and stripes of the Bible, the stars are the angels and the stripes are what Jesus Christ got for my sins, not for a stupid flag. You got, a, you got another nail in my coffin. That's perfectly fine. And you send it to me, I'll sign my signature to it. And I am not a Jehovah Witness. Jesus is God. And if you say so, you're the liar. I'm the true. Stand before God one day. You don't need to splice the tape. I said it. And that day shall the root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign for the people. The people. That's all the world. To it shall the Gentiles seek. And his rest, oh, that rest you find in Hebrews, shall be glorious. What's that rest? The millennium, the seventh, the seventh day. You know, the Sabbath year of rest. The Sabbath period. And what will be if, if the calendars of God be the Hebrew calendar? And that rest is coming the, the, the sixth, the seven thousandth year? Man, we got many, many years left of the Jewish calendar. And it shall come to pass, particular special in the Bible, in that day, there it is again. I got to be with all my marking of my Bibles here. Uh, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. <coughs> he did it in 1948. He set that land for the Jews. He's going to set that land. And he himself is going to enter that land like Joshua. Joshua, Jehovah saves. Jesus, Jehovah saves. Joshua went in with an army of the people of God. Jesus is going in army with the people of God, his bride. And on the way to the promised land, we're going to stop off at a cursed city and we're going to pick up Rahab. Rahab won't be a Gentile woman. Rahab will be a Jewish woman. And we're going to bring her. Rahab went in. You know what Rahab was? She was a harlot. Do you know how, how God describes Israel? She was a harlot. She messes around. Uh, Jose, I believe he said, you know, go marry a harlot. You do know your Bible, right? I hope you do. I hope you don't, you know, when the flag goes up, put your arms up like that and don't read your Bible. I pledge allegiance. You pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth? 
Really? Which one? How many flags are all over the world right now? How many flags are flying outside of the United Nations? Well, the flag of America. You mean where the Democrats were burning the West and the Republicans just burnt the, the Capitol Hill and, and set Capitol Hill ablaze and all that and entered in, into Pelosi's office and stole a computer? You mean them Republicans? You mean the Republicans are no better than the Democrats and Democrats are no better than Republicans? Why not just put your faith in Jesus, preach the gospel, and leave voting alone? I'm seeing Baptist preachers right now. Yeah, the, the elections were stolen. The elections were stolen. How about if God said, I want Biden as president of the United States? Well, Biden is going to bring socialism. Well, socialism is the Antichrist. Bring it on, God. Because we're one more step closer to the Antichrist, which means I'm out of here before the Antichrist. Won't be if I get four more years of life because you want a certain president that is so prideful and can't stand to lose. Pride before destruction. How did I get off on that? Recovered the remnant of his people, Israel. There are people, there are agencies, there are religions, there are groups of people that God is all finished with the Jew. Not according to my scriptures. We, the KKK, we're Christians, but we hate Jews. Cursed be anybody that hates my people. You, you can't be Christian. You can't be a Hebrew, Jewish, Israeli, Israel hater and be and profess honestly to be a child of God. There's no such thing. That's why I like to have a chocolate chip cookie with cyanide and put a lot of cyanide in it. God is not all finished with the Jew. God loves that Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble. He's going to whip the behind of the Jew because they are his children. And Jesus Christ is going to come back on that horse and he's coming to get God's bride, the nation of Israel. Which shall be left? The Assyrian from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, and Shinar. Oh, oh that's Babylon. That's the same name given over chapter 10 uh, with, uh, uh, um, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Let me, you stay there. Let me go check his name. I want to get his name right. Nimrod. You know who Nimrod is? You know who Nimrod? Happy birthday, Tammuz. Happy birthday, Tammuz. Oh, my sweetheart's going get, to get pregnant on Easter. Happy birthday, Tammuz. And from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Now, I don't know what the islands of the sea are. Uh, my Bible says coast. I've seen. It's a particular statement. Now, guess what? God knows what it is. I know. And he, God, shall set up an ensign for the nations. Again, that's Jesus Christ. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Jesus Christ does that. And gather together the disperse of Judah. That's chapter 12, where he, where he gives her the, the wings and flies off to a place prepared for her as the devil chases her. From the four corners of the earth. Oh, oh, there we go. The earth is round. North, east, south, and west. Got you. The envy of, also of Ephraim shall depart. There goes their sins. The adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Cut off means you go to hell. I will curse them that curse you. There is that promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't mess with Israel. Don't mess with a Jew. Male or female. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. That's a sin. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. That's a sin. Israel is going to get cleaned up. But they shall fly upon the shoulders, plural, we read about shoulders singular before with Jesus, of the Philistines. 
That's their enemy. Toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. Spoils after the battle, after the war. What's the battle? What's the war? When Jesus comes on horseback. Joel chapter 2. And they shall lay their hands upon Edom. That's their brother. In Moab, that's their brother. Edom is Esau. Moab is Abraham's cousin, I think, whatever, whatever, son by his daughter. And the children of Amon, that's the other daughter of Lot. That's one big happy family. Shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. That's the Red Sea. And with the mighty wind, it's got to be something about that wind. We've been studying about that wind. Jeremiah will speak about a wind. Lord, when we get there, he shall shake his hand over the river. The Nile. In the plagues of Egypt, that, that, that the, the waters brought the flies, brought the frogs. And then there was a great wind that picked up the locusts and carried them off. You do have read the Bible, haven't you? Oh, you're still pressing, uh, you know, uh, you know, or the other nonsense. You're pledging to other things besides the Bible. Yeah, I know you're mad at me. Turned it off. Oh, well. And shall smite the seven streams and make men go over dry shot. He's going to dry it up. And men are going to walk across. God did that with the dry, with the Red Sea. He did that with the Jordan River. He did it with the Jordan River with Elijah. He did it with the Jordan River of, of Elisha. And he's going to do it again. <coughs> Armageddon, he's going to dry up the land. For the battle, God has a great thing of drying up. And there shall be a highway for a remnant of for his people. Israel is going to have dry ground again like they did when they came out of Egypt. Exodus is going to happen again. And we, the Christians behind Jesus Christ, is going to be a part of that again after God opens up the sea and lets us go through in the rapture. Many, uh, what did he say? I know you don't study the Bible. You're mad at me for making a comment about the flag. Which shall be left for the Assyrian. Oh, there he is again. The Battle of Armageddon. Like as it was in Israel, uh, uh, like it, it happened before, in the day that it came out, out of the land of Egypt, the Red Sea is going to happen again. History will repeat itself. And what is America doing right now? She's rewriting all of history and getting rid of the history she don't like. It'll be very ignorant. <laughs> 